All right, uh, moving on to reports. We're starting with student reports. Uh, Talon Betts, do we have you with, with us? Welcome. Yep, I'm here. Floor is yours. All right, so this last week we had our homecoming. It was supposed to be the week prior, but we had to move it because of um, the team couldn't come down to play. So we moved it to last week. Uh, the homecoming week included a parade to, through the GMES and the elementary school. Um, uh, halftime activities, we had the king and queen crowning. And uh, after that, we had a, um, a little dance in the gym, I believe. Or outside on the field, my bad. <laughs> um, other than that, we have, uh, we are starting a new like math tutoring thing at the high school with Miss Beck. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then uh, FFA is hosting their annual blood drive. Obviously, you can do it last year because of COVID and anything, but that's starting next week on the 4th, on Thursday. So, pretty good. Great. Thank you. Congratulations on the win Friday night and uh, opportunity to play again in uh, about 10 days, right? Absolutely. Yep. We're going to bring it to Ridgefield. Very exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. Any questions for talent? Sorry. Okay, congrats. Thanks, Talon. All right, we'll move on to building reports. Um, we'll start with uh, primary school, Amy and Danny. Hi, Grant. I'm going to take our building report for tonight. I'm Danny okay. Kearns. I'm the assistant principal at Rochester Primary School. And uh, proud to say that our interventions are up and running for our first and second grade students in the area of reading. A big shout out to Mrs. Easley for getting us up and going in our title EAs for doing the screenings and the instruction and our teachers for getting kids to intervention each day. Also, RPS Fast, our families and schools together is hosting a trunk or treat event um, at RPS October 31st from four to six. Um, they're looking for any volunteers that would like to come decorate a trunk and deliver treats to kiddos who come through and also donations of candy. Um, and you can reach out to them if you're interested um, at rpsfast at gmail.com. I feel like I'm giving them a ad here space at our meeting this evening. Um, but that's an exciting event for our kids to have um, in Rochester. And then to celebrate, we're also having um, a free dress up Friday. A little more inclusive this year. Kids can choose to dress up or to not participate. Um, and then our fall fest, which we've traditionally had, um, you know, due to COVID circumstances and large group gatherings, uh, we're doing that more at an individual classroom basis. And that's supported by our fan. And we want to say thank you for those supplies for our kids to have some fun with crafts on Friday. And then uh, the other one that I have here is uh, Karen Keir is a kindergarten teacher in our building, and Mr. B, um, I can't pronounce Matt's last name very well, is our custodian. They are both retur uh, retiring on, um, the, their last day is Friday, so they're both leaving um, our wonderful school district, and Mr. B, I can share with you, um, wanted to leave us with a, with a project, and he refurbished the bench that had seen some wear and tear. He worked with the high school and it's just beautiful. And that bench honors um, our former uh, REIP teacher. And if I have this up, her name is Susan Bishop and she taught at REIP for a long time and he refurbished her bench so that it's safe for students. So that was sweet of him. But both of both Karen and Mr. B, their last day will be this Friday. So that is the report from Rochester Primary School. Did you have any questions for me this evening? I was saying thank you on mute. Uh, <laughs> any questions? Not, not I. Thank you very much. Appreciate thank it, Dave. Uh, we'll move on to the uh, elementary school, Kelly and Kelsey. <clears throat> Good evening. My black shirt's fading in with the darkness outside, so I feel like all I am is a head right here at the moment. <laughs> um, so um, I, I'll piggyback on what Danny said in regards to interventions. It's great to see all our interventions up and going. 
And um, yes, kudos to our EAs and Joey. And you know, we did have some students out on quarantine and uh, our EAs are just amazing. They just clicked into like we did last year and did remote um, assessments to get those kids going. So it was great to get all kids up and going. Um, we had, you might remember, we had SPA testing this fall because it was paused last spring. And so we just wrapped all that up yesterday. So it's good to have that taken care of and behind us. That was only for fourth and fifth grade ELA and math. Um, we had great attendance at conferences in the fall, both in person and via Zoom. And we were able to have a book fair. So that was great in early October. Um, we have spent the month and this week in particular wrapping up our goal meetings with teachers. So teachers are setting goals for their own professional growth. It's personal to them, as well as setting goals for their students. And that's some of my favorite time because I, I get one-on-one -on -one time with my teachers for about um, 30 minutes each to really hear the vision and dream for the school year. And that's really bucket billing for me. Um, so I enjoy that. Um, and then we too are having a fall fun Friday on Friday um, along the same lines as the primary trying to be more inclusive and we our theme for that is have it your way day so kids can wear a costume if they choose or they can dress as something different or choose not to dress up at all but the bottom line is we're going to make a Friday a fun day so we're looking forward to that any questions not I, Kelly. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you, Kelly. All right, move on to the middle school. Will and Todd. Thank you. Um, similar to what Kelly said, so we had between 80 and 90 percent of our families in for conferences just a few weeks ago. Uh, that was a little bit after mid quarter. It was great to see all those families. You know, we did our first back to school success or you know, connecting for success conferences way back uh, in late August and early September. So it was nice to have families come back in to talk about how their students were doing after the first five or six weeks of school. So that was great. Uh, great seeing all those families and, and helping kids to be successful. We're on the quarter system at the middle school. So the quarter is about to end. We end this next Thursday as the last day of the quarter. So grades will get locked in and we'll start a whole new quarter. Uh, next Friday. So um, that's kind of a, a cool opportunity to get kids caught up. Um, and I just want to shout out to the, the entire staff. Um, we are struggling at times with staff shortages, folks being out and, and being a bit shorthanded and helping other schools out and doing that sort of a thing. And, and the staff has really pitched in and helped to the cover. They're getting tired, but um, they have really uh, answered the call to help each other out to give our kids the best education possible. Uh, and I just really appreciate um, helping with those staff shortages, shortages, helping with some supervision in the hallways and, and rolling with all the changes that continue to come. Um, we have a couple of fun activities coming up. One, we have Crazy Hair and Sock Day on Friday. The kids are going to be doing their academics, but they can also do a Crazy Hair and Sock thing. And hey, why not throw in Picture Makeup Day on that day as well? So yeah, we ended up with picture makeup day on the same day as crazy hair and sock day. We've told the kids plan accordingly. Um, and then similar to what we did last year, we are doing the drive through feast on the 20th of November. So we can't do everyone sitting, you know, shoulder to shoulder with a few hundred people in the commons like we like to do on that Saturday before Thanksgiving. Uh, but we are hoping that we will be able to provide 600 meals to families in our community on Saturday, um, the 20th of November. And so we're really looking forward to that. The ASB is just doing, doing great work, the leadership class and some other kids. And, and of course our folks from Sodexo as well. Um, just really appreciate that opportunity to serve the community and you know, help them out. That's what I have. That's great, thanks. Well, is there a um, opportunity to volunteer on the, the meals? You, know, you got enough? I think we'll have plenty of kids to volunteer. It was, it was really fun last year. Um, kids had one hour um, slots last year to help out. And we had so many kids that were begging their parents to let them stay. And, and so we ended up with more student help than we even needed. Um, 
because you're not cleaning up after folks and doing that. So, you know, you're delivering car things to cars. It's a, it's a relatively easy thing, but I appreciate it. But I, I think we'll, we'll have more kids than even we know what to do with. Good Which is a great problem to have, right? That's not even a problem. That's great. Any questions for Will? Hey, Will, oh, so a like, uh, couple quick questions. Um, when you talk about the, well, let's go to the easy one first. The meals thing will be virtual, or not virtual, but drive through. Does that mean the sale and the gymnasium is that off again this year? Or are you guys posting that? Or yeah, we we're that's off again this year. We're we're just not going to be in a spot where we're going to have hundreds of people packed into the gym. Okay. I wish uh, we could have it. I look forward to having it again. I miss it. My wife likes spending hundreds of dollars at that event. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay, I hadn't heard that. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Not about your wife, but the thing. Uh, <laughs> good to know, though. Um, now back to the uh, um, back to the uh, substitute issue, if that's what I was hearing. You're saying that people are covering a lot for each other. Is it more so because you cannot get subs for the teachers and EAs that are calling out? Or can you talk a little bit more about why the extra coverage now? Well, we're struggling to find subs. So that's, that's one thing. It is definitely a struggle to find subs. There aren't as many subs as there have been in years past. And then the other one is, you know, we've got folks sometimes that are out, they're close contacts or what have you, and they're out. And so, yeah. Just not enough people to come in and backfill then. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. You say a higher demand for, for subs as well? I think it's a little bit higher of a demand for subs and and significantly less available. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions for Will? Okay. We will jump to the high school, Mike or Kevin. Yeah, so it, it's been a really eventful uh, little bit. Talon hit on uh, the, the bulk of it with our homecoming celebrations and, and games and after, after uh, after game uh, student get together, um, you know, I, I will echo for just for a minute uh, what Will said about the um, extreme flexibility and compassion of our staff in a time where we can't find substitutes. And um, it, it is, it's, it's amazing to see staff pull together and help out each other. Uh, Kevin and I occasionally get into classrooms as well and need to do some teaching, which is, which is fun for us uh, to be back in that space again. But I just want to echo what Will said and how thankful we are for for our staff and, and stepping in in this time. It, it's um, it's a, it's an interesting time in education and and we're our staff are rising to the occasion. Um, the biggest news: so uh, Friday uh, we are we are doing a a uh, pumpkin uh, explosion event. So uh, the Kornstrom family has donated uh, quite a few pumpkins to us. So today we. We got into the truck and went and went down and picked up uh, 60 some odd pumpkins from the Cornstrom's field. And um, so we brought them back to school. So what the kids are doing with that is in all their math classes, kids are figuring out how many rubber bands it takes to explode a pumpkin. And there's some math and some graphing that kind of goes along with that as well. And obviously there's different size pumpkins and different size pumpkins or, or types of pumpkins. So they're taking all that into consideration. So uh, Friday all day long, if anybody would like to come out and, uh, try their hand at exploding some pumpkins using rubber bands, come on over. Uh, the kids are excited. They, they were emptying the pumpkins uh, today. Um, gosh, we, we've got a, a new athletic director who's just doing a, an outstanding job. Um, Kevin Erickson here somewhere, but I, I want to make sure I give a shout out to him because it is a, it's a tough transition, transitioning from a classroom teacher to an athletic director. And he's just doing amazing. And I uh, can't say enough about him. Um, Kevin, did I, did I miss anything that you want to add in? No, just a couple updates to mark your calendars. November 10th will be our fall um, band and choir concert. So November 10th, 7 o'clock at the high school. And then later in the month, we'll have a, our fall play, the Shakespeare play, The Tempest. It will happen at 7 o'clock, both Friday and Saturday night. But mark your calendars for some arts that are happening in November. So the 10th, the uh, little band and choir and then 19th, 20th for our fall play. Uh, that's the, that's all I have. Um, I, 
I guess, Mike, we should have told Ed about the pumpkin thing, but he'll figure that out Friday. Sorry, Ed. He's out there somewhere. No, just kidding. <laughs> That's all I have from the high school. Great. Thanks, Mike. Kevin. Any questions for Mike or Kevin? All right. Thank you very much. We'll move on to management reports. Uh, start with uh, athletics. The new athletic director, Kevin Jerk. Kevin with us? Thought I saw him out there. Kevin, you might be on mute. He's yeah. got to unmute his mic. Upper right hand corner of your screen, there should be a. You take your mouse up there and cover your screen, it should show mute or unmute. There we go. Apologies. Good, good evening, everybody. Um, you know what? I have I have to admit I'm underprepared for this. Um, I was really foc I was really focused on uh, agenda item number nine to discuss with you folks a little bit. Um, I'm going to have to follow up. I apologize. No worries. We, <laughs> you've been st stepped into a big job and been really busy uh, right off the bat. So uh, thank you. Sorry about that. No, no worries. Uh, we will we'll see on agenda item number nine. Uh, Ed with uh, maintenance custodial updates there. I'm Are you excited about Friday and the pumpkins. Yeah, this this whole Mike and Kevin pumpkin thing got me a little scared. I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm sure it'll be good. Um, I guess I'll start with some of our completed projects since we've last talked. Um, we poured concrete around the uh, baseball soccer shed, so it uh, makes the access and entrance and easement to that building a lot better than wading through water. Um, we poured uh, some concrete down at the district office, if anybody's been down there, it cleaned up the entrance way a bit, it, it looks pretty nice. And we've completed the fence out in front of the high school, which helps set a nice clear boundary. And I've seen people have already started decorating it with a big rod, big blue arm and a uh, solo cup heart uh, decoration. So it looks pretty nice. Um, <clears throat> next is some of the uh, projects we're working on. We're doing a lot of, of course, debris and gutter cleaning right now. Um, working on the west property line fence between the maintenance shop and GMES. Um, we have a lot of parent traffic back there now dropping kids off for that. And it's just nice to secure that fence line and, and clean that area up a little bit. Um, some of the future projects we've got going on is um, whether it's Jesse and Kevin combined, but they're kind of flooding us with uh, some scoreboards and, and uh, stuff like that at the maintenance shop. So we've got some basketball scoreboards to install and some new football scoreboard to install. So uh, we're, we're scheduling those things to get scheduled here around uh, athletic schedules and whatnot. Um, we're getting, we're putting new uh, uh, engineered wood fiber uh, material on the play fields at RPS, GMES, and Rochester Preschool. Um, all that uh, material needs to be upgraded and, and brought in. So hopefully we'll be doing that here relatively soon. And then we're trying to um, do some lighting upgrades, uh, hopefully relocate the poles that are at RPS that the buses are kind of driving around and add some new lighting at uh, RMS for the walkway, it's, it's uh, you don't realize how dark it is at seven o'clock in the morning out there and, and the lighting doesn't quite reach out where everybody's dropping the kids off. So we're trying to rectify that. Um, again, I, I guess I, I'll, I'll tack on what Will was saying, the whole shout out. Um, we deal with food service a lot, fixing a lot of things for those, those people. And it's absolutely amazing what they're doing with the little resources. They're, they're getting the resource challenge that everybody else is. Uh, food challenge, all that stuff. And uh, there, I was over at the middle school today and there was one person literally just going like crazy with, you know, a line of 200 kids coming and getting food. So I was pretty impressed. They're, they're, uh, they're kind of behind the scenes. We don't really see them, but they're, they're doing a good job. So aside from that, I think if anybody has any questions, that's pretty much what I've got. Thank you, Ed. Questions for Ed? Not I. This is Neil. I have a question. 
Uh, I heard you talking about the gutters, Ed. Um, how are the new roofs holding up? Everything going well? Yeah, the uh, the GMES, we've actually, uh, I guess that's something I should have put on the list, but uh, since we've got the new roof, we've completely went through and replaced all the stained or damaged tiles in the elementary school. And I know Kelly and her staff, it just makes it a lot nicer when you go into a place and it looks nice in there. They've been replaced and painted and um, so yeah, that, that part is nice and that, that roof is doing really good. The uh, roof on the field house, um, uh, we had all their screws and stuff replaced. We've had a couple little leaks here and there, but the uh, roofers have been right out to take care of it. Wonderful, glad, glad to hear that. You can always tell how good a roof is once we get the first big rain. Yeah, yeah, well, we've had, we, it's been challenged. Awesome, sounds great, thank you. Okay, thanks, Ed. Uh, Kevin, I, I, I understand you're you're back on track here. Yeah, well, you know, I, I guess in a sense I wasn't off track. I was prepared with uh, with a, uh, a report and then that agenda item. But management threw me, and I thought, oh, geez, did I miss a step here somewhere? But no, <laughs> we were out of order. Yeah, hey, we've got we've got some exciting news uh, uh, in uh, in Rochester Athletics uh, last week. Um, soccer wrapped up um, at the middle school. And you know what's been kind of a common theme, and it would probably come as no surprise, um, is just with, uh, you know, the, the, the COVID climate and, and the sim symptoms involved. And um, the, the common theme with soccer has been just, it's been difficult to be consistent in fielding, fielding a team. Kids are gone, you're moving kids up to cover spots, you're having to cancel. Um, some of the the C squad JV matches um, just because you simply don't have the number, but uh, the soccer coaches report that um, um, they saw kids make progress um, all year long um, at the middle school. Um, again, at the middle school uh, season two has begun this Monday uh, with with wrestling and girls basketball, uh, so that is underway. Um, to the high school cross country, we have some kids that are that are running in district this week. Uh, volleyball, they're hard at it, making up some games from their time off, um, and they're you know they're going deeper into sets with some teams than than they ever have, and that's real positive. They're just looking to find ways to shut the you know to close the door. Um, let's see who my uh, golf golf report. We finished uh, districts last week and although we didn't get anybody moving on to state in the spring um they had two or three that were within strokes of making that cut um and that's more than they've had over the course of the last few years um at that level you know and i the, the high school soccer yeah they were riddled with some injuries and and again having to move people around because people because people were gone and that's just been a real challenge, that consistency piece, uh, you know, for a team. It, it, it makes it, it just makes it difficult all the way around. But they played hard. Um, you know, Coach is talking about uh, having conversations about some summer camps and getting some younger kids interested. Um, moving up the ranks in, in, that leaves us with football. And, hey, we're, we're in a really exciting spot right now um, with, uh, with playoff implications we are looking to see what happens with uh with shelton and aberdeen on friday uh we we uh we may end up in in a playoff if uh, aberdeen gets shelton uh we hope it doesn't go that way um but we're looking to uh you know we're looking to take our message to the next level um and there's just a really i've said it before just a really really good energy right now and we're working hard Any questions? No questions for me. Thank you very much. A lot of good things going on and keeping everybody moving and playing is, I know has been an extra challenge this year, but it's great to see the success and the building on success. Anybody else have questions? Not I. No. Okay, we will move on to business reports. Uh, Jill? Yes, you where would you like here? to start? Let's just start uh, with the enrollment summary. So our October FTE count was 2018. 
um, which puts our funded average at 2002. So we're actually 2.5 over budget still. Um, running start, we had our first running start count and there are 67 running start participants and 34 are running start only. Um, Hart had a big increase to 24 FTE. Um, you'll notice a new section on here, which is the Rochester, Rochester Virtual Academy, which is our middle school academy um, that had four students in attendance for October. Our SPED count is 287 and there are seven students eligible to be counted for gravity. Great, thank you. There are no questions. Can we move to the student FTE trends in October? Yes, so this is a little exciting. That trend is going in the right direction right now. It's going up for the first time in over a year. So we are ending, um, our October account was about where we were at March of last year. So that's good news that we're going in the right direction. That's fantastic. Yeah. And the last item of the budget status? Yep, so for the budget status, uh, at the end of September, 8.33% of the fiscal year was complete. Our revenues are at 6.8 and our expenditures at seven. Um, that's the only report this month because the financial statements were submitted to ESD this morning. Um, so we won't have final numbers till those are reviewed and approved. Great. Thank you, Jill. Any questions for Jill? Nope, not I. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Jill. We'll move on to administrative reports. Are we starting uh, with Justin or Kim? I'll go. I'll go first. Okay. Um, so, so you, you know, I, I look back at my calendar and like last time we met, what, what are things that, I, that I've done? And it's a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a whole lot of this, a whole lot of that. And, um, you know, there's not there's not one big, huge project that, that I've really been 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 working on. But, um, you know, we continue to our district curriculum uh, committee uh, needs to continue to talk about K-5 math, uh, continue to support. Um, our, uh, our new teachers um, in, in their classrooms. Um, Maggie and I are uh, in, in the works of, of developing uh, some classroom management uh, courses for, for te teachers to, uh, to attend. Um, and, and then it's, it's uh, you know, continue planning for technology as there are still um, shortages in, in uh, technology and it's still taking a long time to get technology. I need to be looking out um, you know, this next month, the planning for what I will need by August, um, and I need to get that ordered here in the next couple of months so that I can get it uh, in time for August. So there, there's a lot of, you know, I, I, I'm already planning in, in some things in the next year, and, and we're barely, it seems like we're barely into this year. So, but uh, that's kind of where we are. Thank you, Justin. Any questions for Justin? Nope. Yeah. All right, Kim. All right, can you see my screen? Some pictures of yeah. our amazing students. Perfect, yes. okay. So I thought I would just get us started with um, some pictures of things that are happening around the district. So these were all taken last Friday. So we had a um, homecoming parade where our high school athletes, the homecoming court band, et cetera, all come and, um, prayed through the, the fire lane and all the K-5 students all line up and are cheering and excited to see them. So um, the pictures across the bottom are from that a picture of our um, senior football players on Friday night, the homecoming court, and then some of the student, younger students who are out cheering. So that I would share those um, with you. Some other pictures from around the district. Um, these pictures show some students at our elementary and a high school student who are all up um, in front of their peers explaining their mathematical reasoning as they work through some pretty challenging problems um, in our math curriculum. So just we talk about, you know, athletics and some other things a lot. We don't often get a glimpse of the academics within our system. So I wanted to share some pictures of that. We also have teachers who are really making an effort to check in with kids in their emotional health as well as their academic learning. And so this is just an example of a check-in board that one of our high school teachers uses on Mondays when kids come in. They don't have to say what's going on. They can just put a little stick, a little sticky note 
um, how they're coming in to meet the day and that gives her an understanding about um, what's going on with them and, and how to best meet their needs. So that's an example of how we're checking in on kids' social emotional health. Here's some additional pictures from around the district. Um, one of our new teachers up here in the upper left, Amy M. Sullivan um, in medical careers some middle school kids who are having a conversation of, about a mathematical concept and then some students doing some artwork down here in the lower right. A couple other pictures from around the district last week. Another um, one of our new teachers, um, Mrs. Wood, who is conferencing individually with her students on their work. And then um, another one of our classrooms, this happens to be a fourth grade classrooms, um, practicing for a, an upcoming assessment um, on one of their social studies or, or um, ELA units, and they're doing a Kahoot quiz. And there's great excitement when you walk into the room and they're using their computers to do a, a game show-like review of the content. Um, just a couple more. Um, these are also fourth graders. Um, some of them were working on a fractions assignment up here and another that was working on a STEM activity. So just wanted to give you a glimpse inside our classrooms. A couple other highlights. We are really excited that we um, have been able to hire an additional custodian. We've, as you're well aware as board members, we've had custodial positions open for quite some time. Um, we have found one custodian and have a really good lead on another, which um, is going to put us in a position where we can slowly begin opening our gymnasiums for community use. So outside um, youth, um, basketball teams, wrestling, whatever, sports groups, um, we will start opening our, our gyms to them approximately two weeks out from now. So there's still some work that needs to be done, a lot of communication with them, getting their insurance in place and um, identifying dates and making sure that there's some equity to access of our facilities. Um, and so that is exciting progress in the right direction for us. We're really honored to be able to do that. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we, I believe you have something on your agenda later on, uh, but tomorrow the Pilot Travel Center um, on exit, is that, is that 96? Um, I may have the number wrong, um, in Tumwater um, is opening, they're having their grand opening, and as part of that, um, Rochester School District and Oakville School District are both going to be recipients of a donation to our um, programs. And so I will be there on behalf, representing the school district um, to accept that donation. I believe it's $2,500. That's great. And um, also exciting, next Monday, um, Representative Peter Arbano will be um, touring Rochester High School and Rochester Primary School. He is will have a couple others with him. And the purpose of the tour is to talk to look at our facilities. Um, specifically, the ask was to visit a school that had, um, had been funded in part by um, the school SCAP program through OSPI, and then of course, a local, local bond issue. So that would be um, Rochester primary school portion of the, of the ask. The other was to tour school that would be considered for an upcoming bond. And so that would of course be Rochester High School. So we will be touring both of those facilities um, with him and answering questions on Monday. He's very interested in finding out how it can provide additional support to school districts to have the facilities that they need to, to run um, up-to-date programs for our students. I believe of oh, this is for a later agenda item. So that would conclude my slides for this portion of the um, tonight's agenda. Any questions for me? Thank you, Kim. None here. Others? No questions. I have oh. none at this time. Mrs. Fry, if I may, there was a comment made that's about reporting, and I'd like to share it with the board. Um, Amy Danielson shared that the swim team is also going to districts this year, and she wanted you to know. 
Awesome. And they were definitely represented in the, the student parade on Friday as well. That was great to see. Thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. Congratulations. Okay, so moving on to uh, old business. Uh, we have the WASDA annual conference update. Had I remembered that was next thing on the agenda, I would have just continued to share my screen. <laughs> um, sorry about that. A little yeah. clunky here tonight. So um, just a reminder for those board members who plan to attend the conference in person, that there is quite a protocol that you'd be expected to part, um, go through to be part, a participant since it is being held in King County. So um, please remember when you show up to have your vaccination card or proof of a negative test, and then you can read all the rest of this, all their safety protocols around the meals will be grab and go style, etc. So um, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. And just a reminder, 18 through 20. Thank you. Our next item was a resolution of um, the teacher assignments, a revision. Yes. So throughout the year, this just keeps recycling back to you whenever we have additional um, changes to teacher assignments, anybody out of endorsement, et cetera, this comes back to you for approval. Kim, is this higher than uh, usual with having a lot of uh, lack of teachers and substitutes? Not necessarily. Let me, I'm gonna pull it back open again to make sure that I'm not missing anybody. So it looks like Deanna Baird is uh, new. She, she is, the, um, she is um, taking the position that is vacated by Kevin Yurick when he took the athletic director position. So she's the addition, but this is a pretty consistent number of teachers who would be teaching um, with uh, outside of their endorsement area. So Deanna's the only change from the last approval. Correct. Right? Yeah. Okay. All right. If there are any other questions, I hear a motion to approve the assignment of teachers revision. So moved. Thank you, Michael. Here a second. I'll second. Aye. Thank you, Juana. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Thank you. Any opposed? Okay. Motion passes. All right. Moving into new business. Um, sorry. I, um, I, I I miss this every, just about every time as we finish all the the school reports, um, administrators, principals, I mean, you're, every, everybody's welcome to stay, obviously, but uh, I know you've had long days and lots of long days. So you're also uh, welcome to uh, call at night. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, so uh, 9A, student academic eligibility update here. Is this Kevin? Yes, uh, this agenda item um, is really a request, and that request is for the board to consider um, adopting the WIA um, academic standard. Um, currently, our athletic code uh, defines our standard as a student athlete being ineligible with a, with a single F, and there's some protocols um, in there as to length and um, some language as to support to turn that around. Uh, the WIAA academic standard is students are eligible carrying a single F. And the reason I asked for this to be considered is, is out of concern. Um, you know, we've got, we've got students, we're in a time where students are, are missing school pretty consistently. Um, due to an abundance of caution around infection. Um, we enter into, you know, the, the darkness of winter and the cold and flu season, 
and the symptoms of those um, are, are are often directly shared with that of um, infection. At which point, um, students are 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 being sent home, and there's protocols in place for them to to come back. But what I see potentially that could happen when students are sent home, and I anticipate there'll be a, a little bit of a ramp up in that as we get into winter, um, is that they miss out on that direct contact with their teachers. And it's, it's so vital for, for growth for that contact to happen. So when they're at home, they are essentially, um, you know, they're working through the Google Classroom and the structures within, um, but I really see it uh, potentially being an, an academic disadvantage. And I think that, that by adopting the WIA standard, I think when one, one we're saying, kids, we get it. We're more normal now than we have been, but things are still really, really different. Um, and it's kind of saying, we, hey, we get it. We know, we know where you're at. At the same time, holding them accountable, you know, having a, a, a less than passing grade is, um, is not appropriate. And uh, some structures to pursue changing those grades will obviously um, will, will be in place. Um, but, but those are my concerns. And I would just ask the board, uh, please give that some consideration. So talk a little bit about how you're going to approach those students in bringing their F up to uh, at least a passing grade. Well, um, a lot of times I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with the coaches. Um, they have had a, a, a great impact on just having conversations with kids um, about, hey, we got to get this app turned around and I've seen I've seen success with that I've, I uh, plan on uh, calling students into my office and having a look at um, you know the electronic grade book ask them what's going on and and uh, create some supports connecting them with their teachers um, but it's you know it has to be it, it, it has to be a combined effort but you know academics first is is what we want to be um, I just think that um, maybe that that consideration um, would would benefit them at this time. How long can they carry an F before um, they're ineligible? Under under the current academic policy under the, in the under the WIAA that you want us to adopt. Um. The F, the F, to my understanding, is something that they can carry when you reach that second F. It puts other processes like we already have in place for the single F, the, you know, the, the collaborating with teachers and connecting kids and having conversations with them and, and creating plans to, to change grades around. Thank you. You're welcome. Kevin, I, I want to make sure I'm, I'm reading this right. Um, it reads it, you know, students must be, must be passing all classes to participate. Weekly grade checks will be in the third week. Students failing one class at grade check will be on probation till the next grade check. If that failing grade at the next grade check, then he'd be held out, he or she would be held out of competition until passing all classes. Is that? Is yes, that's accurate. So they, they get the one, the one grade check pass and you know, extra focus, but if, if the second grade check, they're still not passing that same class or failing that same class, I should say, um, then they'd be held out of competition. It does, it seems like it allows, they, they can still participate in practice and, and so they don't lose that engagement with coaches and teammates, and, um, but they can't compete. Is that right? That's accurate, yes. Thank you, Grant. This is Neil, I had a question. Um, are these WIAA standards that are in place right now, are these also along with the governor's thing with uh, uh, the schools and the protocols and the WIA stuff from a couple of months ago? Is this something new that they have in place? Um, no, th this has been in place for um, for this year. I, I can't answer that question. I haven't cross-referenced 
um, with the level that you're talking about, but I can certainly do that. I, I, I would be happy. To, I'm sorry, Kim, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I, I think they're two separate things. So there have always been um, these eligibility standards in place. So WIA has always had a set of eligibility standards. And um, prior to COVID, Rochester School District had more stringent eligibility standards than WAA required. But those standards are very different than the protocols in place for um, athlete safety. So those are those are two different things. So I I think you were asking about those the the protocols for safety and the um, different. Yeah. If I misunderstood your question, please please ask again. Oh, no, I, I, I was just basically wanting to find out if WIAA changed their standards because of the COVID protocols that had been put in place. Because we, we had, there was a deviation last year when they started getting the teams back in sports and they, the governor broke us into divisions, you know, uh, different regions of the, of the state. So I didn't know if this was part of those protocols that they had adopted. So we've always had more stringent standards than the state has as far as athletics go. For eligibility, yes. Okay. Until okay. last year when we adopted the WIAA standards for eligibility for last year and those um, sunsetted. And so now if we want to continue that, it would take an, a, a board action as um, as Kevin has suggested. So yes, we, we did this last year for one year. Um, mm -hmm. And so that sunset as you described. So we could, Kevin's asking that we just adopt the WIAA uh, standards moving forward. Um, I see that so we have this, just oh, just just for this year. Okay, so this is consistent with where we were previously last year. Nothing yeah. has changed. Okay, okay. Kevin, you're you're just asking j just for another year. This, this, I am. This, this I, think, I, I think I think that I think it would be prudent to, to just reevaluate at the end of the year. Um, but yes, I'm just asking for a single year. I understand. Thank you. If, if discussion is, if unless someone else has more discussions to make, I will make the motion to approve this. Thank you, Neil. Is there a second or other discussion? Michael, I'll second. I, I think anything we could do to keep young people engaged right now uh, throughout this next year, as we did last year, is a good thing to do. So I'd be happy to second. Thank you. Any other discussion? All right, all in favor for adopting the WIA eligibility standards uh, for an additional year, this school year as described, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Kevin, you got it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. All right, our next item of business is first reading of policy. I think this is uh, this will be able to address uh, one of the bull's comment earlier. Um, Kim, Kim, do you want to just uh, kind of give us the highlight of, of each policy here? Yes. To, okay. So I, I would like to start since I have it up in in front of me. I'm addressing policy 4311, which is. Um, it was previously named school resource officer and the policy was amended by WASDA, the Washington State um, School Directors Association um, based on legislation. And they have changed the name of the policy to school safety and security services program. Um, they did that because some school districts around our state use SROs as we do and intend to continue to do um, based on the approval of the, the memorandum of agreement with Thurston County Sheriff's Office. But other school districts across the state have a combination of um, commissioned officers, law enforcement officers, and school safety staff, which are not commissioned officers. And so the policy prior only spoke to commissioned officers and because there is this addition throughout our state of additional folks or alternate folks in some school districts, um, they expanded the policy rather than add an additional policy, they blended the two together. So um, 
in this policy, they define school um, safety and security service um, staff um, as meaning school resource officers, school, school security officers, and campus security officers. So they've changed to a generic term that envelops all three of those different types of titles. And so that is, um, you know, the main thing that you'll see um, when you looked at the, the stricken text, and then you'll see the additional text um, that talks about um, that the agreement that we enter into on an annual basis with our law enforcement agency has to include a clear statement regarding the safety and security duties and responsibilities related to student behavior and discipline. And it calls out the things that school resource offices are prohibited from doing in the state of Washington in schools. So it calls those out. Um, it goes into some other details that you can read, but um, the majority of this is that com the combination within this new policy to include um, other forms of officers or security staff that may be present on school campuses in the state of Washington. So WASDA creates policy for all of us um, to consider. We can, uh, we can amend this if the, if the board feels more comfortable because we have always just had commissioned officers to retain some of that language in our policy um, and not revert to the new category or term being used. And that is something that would be at the discretion of, of our board to do that. So that's, that's why this is the first policy reading um, and we can make adjustments if that is the will of the board. So after you review them and you wanna reach out um, let me know and we can make adjustments. But um, to, to answer um, the question that was posed, um, we're, we've entered into a contract with the Thurston County um, Sheriff's Office. Um, they've provided us outstanding service to date and um, it's, it's a service that's very much valued by our administrators. And I know um, many of our families appreciate having a an officer on campus close at hand should anything arise. Um, other policies, um, we have the Language Assistance Program, also known as LAP. Um, I'm going to pull that up really quick. Um, so LAP is a, a state a state program um, that provides um, intervention support in a variety of areas. Um, generally reading math. Um, several years ago, it was expanded to include um, behavior supports. And um, this is new language that was placed into this policy um, that says until the expiration or termination of Proclamation 2005, declaring a state of emergency in Washington due to COVID or September 1st, 2025, whichever is later, the district will budget and expend learning assistance program funds to identify and address the academic and non-academic needs of students from and exacerbated by COVID-19. So there's this acknowledgement that our students um, are dif differently abled as they came back to us this fall. They have much better tech skills than most kids would have at this point in their academic careers, but perhaps they are um, not as far along in some of their math and reading skills as they normally would be. And so this just acknowledges that um, until 2025 or the termination of that proclamation, we need to be very mindful of identifying additional barrier needs that may have occurred as a result of COVID-19. So that is the learning assistance program. Um, Infectious disease. So the infectious disease policy, um, there's just a slight change. They changed the name of the guide that school districts need to use um, and reference in the case of an infectious disease finding its way into our school. And so it was currently, it was previously called the infectious disease control guide. And now it's called the infectious disease control guide for school staff 
And it says provided by OSPI, excuse me, the Office of the Superintendent of Public Instruction. So apparently there was a different infectious disease control guide floating around there. And they wanted to make sure there was no confusion about which one we are required to follow. Um, so this is now called out in the, the policy. Um, just so you know that infectious disease control guide by OSPI has a, a section for pretty much everything you can think of. Um, hand, hand, foot and mouth disease, chicken pox, mumps, measles, rubella, all of those things are listed in there. And so um, if we are presented with one of those cases in a school environment, it instructs our health room assistant or nurse to know when they're required to notify the health department and what um, steps they need to go through to contain any um, potential outbreak or um, contamination to other students or staff as a result of having um, that come into our school environment. Um, next on the list is medications at school. And so um, some legal changes occurred. And so um, particularly related to um, anaphylaxis reactions. So gov there's new laws governing the use of injectable, injectable medications to treat anaphylaxis. So like EpiPens, so there's some change um, to the language around that. Also um, calling out um, the training requirements for um, oral medication, topical medication, eye drops, ear drops, and nasal sprays, um, how that delegation training and supervision of staff that are responsible for administering those things um, can be handled. Um, calls out a couple other things around transportation of medication to and from school, et cetera. So that is um, medications at school, um, response to illness and injury, um, reworking of, a, of one sentence in that paragraph that um, says the board recognizes that schools are responsible for providing first aid or emergency treatment in the case of injury or illness of a student to that end, this is the new language, to that end, staff designated to provide student health support should be certified in first aid, CPR, and AED. Um, and the board encourages all staff to become certified. There's a requirement, of course, for certain people to be, but this encourages all staff. And then the next is on, um, we already talked about school safety and security. The next would be holidays. Um, this aligns to the new requirement that June 19th or Juneteenth is now an official holiday in the state of Washington. And then we have nutrition and physical fitness. And Kim, Kim what's, yes. what's Juneteenth? Juneteenth is the new holiday that was put in through our state legislature in the last session um, that is the acknowledgement of um, the in, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do this justice, but it, it is it's the emancipation date. Thank you. So in our situation, generally students are out of school, but it, it's still a state holiday. And so it is now listed here as a legislative recognized day. Okay. Nutrition and physical fitness, um, it, an addition of a few things. One, it acknowledges that the board believes in the benefits of scheduling at least 20 minutes of seated time for lunch for students and scheduling recess before lunch for elementary to the extent that it's possible. So um, that's something for your consideration. It is not always possible with our schedules and facilities. Um, um, so that's important to know. And there's a addition in physical and health education program section that talks about any student who is excused from participation on the account of a physical disability, employment, religious belief, 
participation in directed athletics or military science or tactics, and other good causes will be required to demonstrate proficiency in the knowledge portion of the fitness requirement in accordance with the district policy. So school districts can no longer, which we didn't really do in this district anyway, but districts can no longer just waive um, a physical education requirement. They have to first um, ensure that the student would have um, demonstrated proficiency in the knowledge portion about fitness and the importance of physical fitness. Mm -hmm. And that um, we have to report the number of students who are granted waivers if we grant any students waivers from PE. And then the final policy is operations. And I cannot get that policy to open right now. Operations. So I don't know if Justin, if you can, but it's basically designee. It's either you or your designee is basically all that they're changing. Yeah, they, so, I know they did very little to it, but I'm sorry yeah, I can't make it populate. Designee. Thank you. So if you have questions, concerns, want to see any type of adjustments or changes that you would notify Shauna or I um, in this interim and we can make adjustments and bring them back for that second reading consideration on um, by the whole board. Kim, this is Neil. Uh, yes. I had a question about the, uh, uh, is it 3418BP uh, response to student injury and illness. Uh, yes. You said that uh, we have people that are required to be uh, proficient Neil, all of a sudden your audio cut out, at least for me. Me too. Still no audio. I think we lost him. Neil, would you, will you try unmuting again and seeing, we lost the second half of your comment. Yeah, I've got unstable internet right now. I'm gonna have to turn off my video and, and I'll listen. Uh, maybe we'll, just, we'll, we'll go over this later if it's, not workable. All right, we I, we just missed the question part, so I oh, I'm not sure how to respond. Uh, uh, does the school district provide uh, payment for the services for teachers to be certified? So anyone who is required to have first aid certification, the district pro provides that. Yes, so we would pay for that to occur. Um, Kevin, I don't know if he knows it, but one of his jobs as athletic director is to make sure that all of the coaches are certified, for example, in, in first aid in, in CPR and AED use. And so he is responsible for making sure that training occurs and often opens that up to other people as well. We, we find other means to make sure that all of our um, playground assistants, people who um, work in our offices, all have that, that training as well. And then we just encourage the others. But anybody who's required to have it, we indeed pay for it and make that available. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you, Kim. We'll move on to 9C contracts. We have uh, five contracts to consider this evening. The first one is the ESD 113 Registered Behavior Technician Training. Yes. Special education staff. So this is training for designated employees who are working with students who have um, significant behavior needs. And um, this is a new agreement. So um, sometimes if it's a renewal agreement, you'll ask if there was a change in cost, et cetera. This is a new agreement to provide this training. Any questions on this one? not, I would uh, move to approve ESD 113 RBT training. I'll second. Thank you, John. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. All right, our next contract, at least on my list, is the, uh, oops, I misclicked there, um, contract for Washington Center for Deaf and Hard of Hearing. Yes, so this will provide a, a point two position, 2.2 FTE. Um, the cost is $2,315 a month. Um, it was, this is less than the contract for the person who um, was previously providing the service. 
Okay. Any questions about that? If not, can I get a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you, Michael. All second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Our next contract to consider is the uh, ProCare CODA, paraprofessional services. Yes, this is a certified occupational therapy assistant position and um, the new person coming on board, her contract is $4 more per hour than the previous um, contract we're replacing. Or filling. Any questions about that one? No, I would move to approve the ProCare Coda Maggie Danforth contract. Are you a second? I'll second. Thanks, Juan. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, contract approved. Next one is uh, ESD 113 for Gravity Dropout Reengagement Program Consortium. So this is the annual renewal. And so for this program, students who would otherwise, who are residents of Rochester, who would otherwise be our student, who attend the Gravity Program, their um, allocation from the state just passes through to ESD 113 for those services. So there's no financial change to this agreement over last year. Um, it's just a, an annual renewal. Okay. There are no comments. Uh, move to uh, renew the gravity contract. I'll second? move. Thank you, John. Very second. Second. I'll second. second. There's a whole lot of seconds. We'll go with Michael. I think I heard Michael first. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. And our last one is the Wazoo Student Teaching. This was one we added here in the consent agenda. Or yes. So right. in order to accept student teachers from any college or university, we need to have an agreement on file. And so this is the agreement um, for the next five years um, to begin January 2022 um, with WSU in order to place student teachers within our system. Anybody wearing those cover colors cannot comment. <laughs> well, I'm wearing purple, so I, I will. I will move to approve. <laughs> I'll second. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Contract adopted. All right, our next item is uh, the donation, the grant from a uh, pilot that uh, Kim was talking about earlier. Yes, so um, we have a policy that requires the board to approve donations of this size. Um, I would ask that you would gladly accept this $2,500 donation from the pilot company um, presenting that will be presented to the school district tomorrow. And um, it's going to be used for um, Technology at Rochester Primary School. Fantastic. Yeah, it's great. wonderful. I love the idea. Can we get a discount on gas for our travels <laughs> and our buses? Boy, that would Just be nice. Thought. Hey, anything to help the kids. Yeah. All right. Uh, your motion to approve the donation? Accepting the donation? This is Juana. I'll move forward to approve that. Thank you. Here, second. I'll second that. Thanks, Neil. Neil. Yep. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. That brings us to the end of new business and to our second uh, public input opportunity. So again, if there's any uh, public input, uh, please put your name, email, and chat. Um, we have uh, three minutes each. Um, if you'd like to share something that uh, may not have been on the agenda. And Justin's uh, kind of sharing the protocol. So we'll give it you know, a minute or so and, and uh, we'll call names as they, as they come in, in the order they come in.
Grant, I think we're, we're we're ready, and I'll continue to watch the the chat. But uh, are we are we ready for speaker number one? Are you ready? Sure. All right, Lindsay Baker. Lindsay, welcome. Good evening, Rochester School Board Superintendent, my fellow parents and community members. Yes, it's me again, Lindsay Baker. Most of you know who I am. I'm sure the school board and some of you are tired of hearing from me, but I will not stop speaking up and advocating for my children and the rest in the district ever. As we have seen over the last two years, us parents are the only ones that are going to do so. I don't care who doesn't like me or who gets mad at what I have to say. The Rochester School Board has failed several of their duties, then in turn failed our children over the last two years. They have failed to review, revise, and adopt policies. They have bowed down and done exactly what the dictators in Olympia tell them to do without doing their own research and creating policies that work for the students of Rochester. It is the board's job to adopt policies that fit within the district they are elected to represent. The policies in Olympia, Tacoma, Seattle do not fit Rochester, and we did not elect Dr. Abdomalik, Chris Reichdahl, or Jay Inslee to serve on our school board or make policies used in Rochester School District. Adopting policies on well, on well, based on well-researched practices is something they have failed to do. There have been many board meetings over the last two years where parents such as myself have provided very credible research about COVID-19 masking our children and the vaccine to the board that they had no idea about. Other than John, the rest of the board our super and our superintendent quickly dismissed the information and moved along with their agenda. If you are going to be in a position, you you are making decisions about our children. You should be educated enough to do research other than what CNN, Fox, MSNBC, and Facebook and Twitter offer. They have also failed to serve as community representatives. They have chosen to represent a small portion of the community, a very small portion that is willing to co-parent with the government and the school board, or they have put their own personal beliefs before those of their constituents. It is very apparent from Facebook posts made by board members that political views have been brought in on decisions being made. The school board is no place to implement your political opinion. I find it actually pretty disturbing that a person elected to represent the constitu constituents of Rochester School District would post the things I have seen. When in the position of school board member, you are representing our community and I definitely do not want people like that representing the community my children are in. This behavior does not promote a healthy relationship by communing, communicating supportively, inspiring, motivating, and empowering others and exercising influence in a positive manner. Another duty of the school board that they have failed to add is advocating on behalf of the students and the school. All we have heard throughout this whole pandemic is we have to do this, we have to do that, the board this, the board that. Not anything about what is best for the students. It has been about we have to do this or we will be held liable. This is the decision you made when taking the role of the school board member. If you are not willing to advocate for our children based on fear that you may be held liable, you do not belong in the position you are in. Our children deserve a school board that has a backbone and is willing to do the job they are elected to do and advocate for all students, not a very small portion. The school board is, base, is to base their decisions on input from the superintendent, families, teachers, students, and the general public. Not once have I, nor my children or husband, received anything asking for our input on policies that have been put in place over the last 13 years I've had students in this district. I have spoke at many board meetings and all I ever get is thank you for speaking. There is never any feedback or response to what me, my, what myself or other parents have to say. That brings me to one of the biggest issues at this very moment. We have made the, you, who made the decision on what you call reasonable accommodations for staff that receive an exemption for COVID-19 vaccine. The ones that should make the decision are the parents of the children who are in the schools as a whole, no one else. They are our children, not yours. 
They have suffered enough over the last two years. Do you realize my second grader still have, does not know what a normal school year is? I guess the suffering they have endured over the last two years wasn't enough for you guys because you're pouring salt into their wounds by the pound. So many students, present and future, will suffer the loss of not being able to have Mr. Bubba as an educator any longer or in the future. It is teachers like him that have made Rochester School District what it is. It isn't the people in the district office or the school board. Electric educators like Mr. Bubba are the ones that leave lasting impacts on our children along with the support staff. Why is it that you have felt and assured us parents in the district for the last year plus these educators were safe enough with just a mask and social distancing to be around our children, but now you are changing your story. Please tell me why. Why? Is it because Jay Inslee told you so? Because I know it's not based on research. Also, please tell me why you want to fire amazing educators because they refuse to get a vaccine that is not effective in stopping the spread. Vaccinated spread the virus the same as unvaccinated. The only thing is it lessens the chance of death or hospitalization in the vaccinated, but that isn't even a guarantee. I don't want to hear answer, hear the answer because it's mandated, because it's mandated for my job in healthcare also. And those that have received, received exemptions are not treated any different than those that are vaccinated. You and only you have put in these reasonable accommodations. It is absolutely appalling you are willing to segregate your staff and force those with sincere held religious beliefs against this experimental vaccine containing aborted fetus cells to get experimental testing twice a week or lose their job. The fact that you sleep okay at night knowing that you are showing my children and all the other children of color in this district that it is okay and the rest of the student body, that it is okay to separate people based on their religious, medical, or other beliefs is disgusting. What is next? Are you going to implement vaccinated and unvaccinated bathrooms, drinking fountains, recesses, and lunch? Not only are you segregating staff, you are doing it to students also. My son was going to wrestle. Unfortunately, he got hurt and can't. Where did I go? Lindsay, we're, we're about. I wanted to separate him to experimental medical testing twice a week because he is not vaccinated and will not be. It states it. It states it would be supervised by a, by a professional. Who is the professional? What are their credentials? Have they been trained by the scientists who are conducting the experiment with the COVID nineteen test? To think my very own children are experiencing segregation because they have not and are not getting the COVID vaccine pisses me off to no end. Mr. Bubba fought for this country and our freedoms and you feel as Rochester School District, you have the right to take those away. Maybe it's time you all go back and take a history class and get a refresher on the constitution and civil rights because you don't have those rights nor do the dictators in Olympia or Washington DC. I really hope you're all prepared for the dictators next move because the vaccine mandate for children is coming and it will be over my dead body, my children are getting this and I am not alone in that. My children will be removed from the district and homeschooled, but don't get excited because I am a taxpayer, so I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> if you all want to keep your jobs, I'm going to parents a little more serious on this situation because you are in fear of losing funding by not following the dictator's mandates, but it isn't gonna matter when you lose 50 to 75% of your student body. In conclusion, the reasonable accommodations you have placed are unacceptable. Let the parents decide and do not punish our children anymore. Bring Mr. Bubba back, vote Thomas Trott and write in Heather Mitchell for school board. Give the choice back to us parents. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Who's next? Next is uh, Bull Demers. Hey, Bull. Floor is yours. Hello again. Um, I'd like to say thank you for letting her speak. That was uh, that was awesome. I, I can't top what she's got to say, but I'm going to try and add to that. Um, 
Members of the board, let's talk about the issue of the mandate. Uh, first, I want you to know one thing. Be clear, I am not an anti-vaxxer. I have nothing against anybody that gets the jab. I will hold no ill will or feelings to anyone who wants to be vaccinated. I will treat each and every person the same as I always have, vaccinated or not. It's my opinion and opinion to the millions of others around the world that sane people shall be afforded the right to choose what they put in their bodies. You, however, as a school district have chosen to take that choice and turn it into a contentious issue. Rather than protect the rights of your loyal employees in our district, you have chosen to enforce the rules that you want the people to live by. You have segregated your staff and your community the tensions in the air in our community is thick because of your decisions. It is a shame that the conversations nowadays revolve around, are you vaxxed or are you not vaxxed? You should be vaxxed or you shouldn't be vaxxed. I'm asking you as the leadership for our, for our district to do the right thing, stop the discrimination in our community. Two months ago, we had no segregation in our employees. That was just two months ago. If, if you would stop that, we could stop the segregation. You know, as well as I do, if the mask worked, we would need no vaccination. If the vaccinations worked, we'd need no mask. That's right. I would ask someone on this board to follow the lead of other districts and make a motion to remove termination as an option for any employee choosing not to be vaccinated at this time. On another note, I would like to remind the board members that not so long ago, this is a different subject, that not so long ago, a coach was denied employment because of actions or inactions that in my opinion now are being dem are being caused by uh, employed people in our schools. Uh, at this time, I wanna remind the board, other than teaching about politics, it should never enter our schools. Personal beliefs, affiliations to certain organizations and political parties should never become a problem in our classrooms. The district knows about some people that <laughs> do that, and I ask that they take immediate action. One that I know of has had several incidents that have caused enough concern at this time. I would ask that you terminate that teacher. Yes. yes. If the there board you. wants to know who that teacher is, reach out to Principal Wilson and ask him about the latest do-rag incident. To those attending this meeting, I recommend you choose wisely when it comes to your vote and be careful what you vote for, for the sake of our children and our grandchildren. Ladies and gentlemen of the board, thank you for your time. Thanks, Paul. Uh, next is Heather Mitchell. Heather, welcome. Hi, thanks everybody. I'll be short and sweet tonight. Um, I want to help uh, pay off some of Lindsay's time debt, so I'm going to be giving her some of my time. Uh, just a couple of things tonight. Uh, I went on the website. I was kind of checking to see what's going on with Rochester. We're over in Oakville, so I, I'm not up on the current happenings. I noticed something on the website today. Um, I think it said at the heart of the community, uh, two years ago, I, I would have agreed with you hundred uh, percent. I want you to know uh, over the next, I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes, you're going to be hearing other parents talk. Uh, I, I think that it would, uh, I, I think it behooves you to listen to every parent, even if we go over three minutes, I think it's very important that you hear what we have to say. Uh, but more importantly, I think we should get our IT department on that website and update that because you're going to hear that we don't believe you're the heart of our community anymore. And that's really sad. Second, I think you have an appeal in front of the board for one of your staff members. I ask that you really consider that and you figure out how you can continue to employ Bubba Carento. Our children need him. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank the, the board for the opportunity to speak, and I'm speaking tonight as a parent, a community member, and an employee. It is my blessing and privilege to live and serve in the community of Rochester. I came to serve and live in Rochester in the fall of 2001. So um, this school year, should I survive the district's current policies of discrimination as of October 18th, will be two decades of service. It has been my life's work as an occupational therapist to advocate and uphold a very deeply held belief of mine that every individual, regardless of age, gender, race, economic status, cognitive or social, emotional or physical abilities, spiritual belief has value. A meaningful and productive role in our community. I have spent nearly half my lifespan instructing skills, teaching functional and adaptive strategies 
and breaking down obstacles that limit individuals' ability to achieve. I am completely heartbroken. I am devastated and emotionally exhausted that I myself have to stand here tonight and talk to you, the administration and the board, to, to remind you of your commitment to serve, to elevate your community, students and families and employees first, their mental and physical health and their ability to achieve above politics. The COVID-19 vaccine requirement for K-12 employees uh, require, requires public and private employees to be either fully vaccinated or obtain a religious and medical exemption. I thank you as I uh, attained my um, religious exemption, <laughs> but it does not require the district to treat unvaccinated students or employees or community members unequitably to fully vaccinated students, employees, and community members. It does not require the district to discriminate or implement discriminatory policies against Rochester students, employees, and community members through the use of the, through the unethical use of the American Disability Act through, through 504 accommodations. It does not require uh, religious and medical exemptions of unvaccinated staff along with that district to require, it requires a mitigating factor to prevent infection and spread of COVID-19 within the school environment. The district is able to treat vaccinated and unvaccinated students, staff, and employees equitably. Masks, the same masks for all staff uh, meets that requirement. Masks and social distancing exceeds that requirement. Masks and social distancing and universal precautions uh, far exceeds that requirement. And it, and it keeps our students, employees, and community safe and our schools funded. I ask you, the board, to reconsider the current policies of discrimination you, you, the district, are implementing in the name of safety. Using the ADA 504 law passed with the purpose and intent to end and remove barriers to discrimination across educational environments, employment, and community as a tool to discriminate against employees is absolutely unnecessary. It's unethical and it's unprofessional. And it places politics above students, families, employees, and community. These policies are in direct conflict in opposition to the district's non-discriminatory policy and the district's mission and vision. They are currently creating detrimental impacts to students and to families and employees within our community, including their sense of belonging and value and achievement. And as I walked around the school on um, Monday the 18th, many people made comment to me about the mask I had to wear and what that meant. I've never been in my life, I've served in some places where I'm the minority. Um, I've served in rural Arizona where, where I was on the Navajo reservation and serving in multiple schools. Never once did I feel the discrimination I have since October 18th in this district. Uh, I believe in this community. I believe in the district's administration and the board of directors. I know with absolute confidence and truth, there is a path and a way to navigate the safety of our schools and the health and well-being of our students and families and employees without discrimination, without undermining our mission and commitment to our students, our families, and our community. We can put them first. Finding a way that puts community first and, and rather than politics requires you, the district Board of Directors and Administration, to stop going it alone, making policies that embrace all that is and, um, sorry, going it alone, making policies that embrace all that is passed down to its full extent. Rather, it requires you in your positions of leadership to collaborate with your students, with your families, with your employees, with your community, to engage in a dialogue, to engage in collective problem solving, to reestablish relationships and rapport with your community. Stop dictating. Model your messaging through action and collaborate with your community. It is never too late to acknowledge mistakes and correct them, for this is how we achieve. Together we stand, together we fall. We have, um, and when we fall, we get up. This district has fallen, and thus our community has fallen. And it is time we get up. We get up by taking each other by the hand and standing together. In the words of one of our forefathers, Benjamin Franklin, they who can give up essential liberty to obtain a little, to obtain a little temporary safety, deserve neither liberty nor safety. Nice job. Thank you, Didi. Baba Carento. Oh, 
Hello, my name is David, Mr. Bubba Carrento. Because of my knowledge and compassion and patience for the students, I am a respected, highly revered, and sought after staff member of Rochester Primary School. I was, until I was required to explain my religious beliefs. Now I'm avoided, talked about, not to. When people see me, they turn their heads so that they don't have to talk to me. But believe me, I'm the same Mr. Bubba. I have not changed. Your perception of me has changed. As you all know, I requested an appeal to the restrictions the district wants to impose on myself and others that were required to voice our religious beliefs. My accommodations that I requested were that you allow me to work freely in my position without the vaccine in my body, without retribution, segregation, or harassment. The restrictions I was offered were to wear a KN95 mask and test every week for the rest of the year. I have not agreed to those restrictions and I've been placed on leave without pay. These restrictions are segregating us, turning people against each other and causing division. The staff were coerced into signing under duress and now in fact being discriminated against. They are hearing the same remarks about myself, themselves that I, were here, I was hearing about myself. They're being treated as second cl class employees because of the restrictions being placed on them. The mask makes them stick out like a turd in a punch bowl. The retribution of the request is causing a hostile work environment and making the learning environment toxic and unproductive. It is clearly evident that the, dist the district is more interested in punishing the educators for their beliefs than finding respectful, reasonable accommodations. The district says it's to keep me safe. I've been in-person teaching for the whole time the whole last school year, I taught in person. You didn't care about me then. I appealed to you when the district denied the changes to my accommodations, and you sent it right back to who denied it. You were elected to oversee the district. You need to make sure the district is doing the right for the community. If you cannot or will not do your job you volunteered to do, step down. The community deserves people who will do what's right, not what's easy. My wife and I spent a combined 35 years fighting for the freedoms, your freedoms and the freedoms of all Americans. Now I'm having to fight to defend them from you. Please help to begin restoring my faith in the district and the school board. Next up is Amanda Singleton. Welcome, Amanda. Oh, Lord. I've got three requests for you this evening. The first one is to open the doors and return to in-person meetings. We can list endless gatherings that are taking place in person safely and a meeting as important as our school board meeting should return to in-person for those that wish to attend. There's a lot of people here that would like to attend. I truly hope that you would continue the recorded um, Zooms so that those who aren't able to attend can watch it at a later time. Second, after watching the last school board meeting, because I do watch them, um, I noticed after the business reports, Michael, that you noticed a decrease in student body count. That must be significant enough that you asked about the potential impact in the funding. Now, maybe I misunderstood because tonight it sounded like we were on budget. Um, but I believe the bigger concern is not the funding, but why. Why are we losing students? Why are they withdrawing from Rochester School District? Um, I'm asking that you have a conversation with these families, reach out to them. Why have they withdrawn their students? And last but definitely not least is the matter of vaccination discrimination. A couple of years ago, we worked together as a community to update our school mascot to warriors for all schools. We did this to create unity, to create a reminder that we're all warriors together, all ages. Once a warrior, always a warrior, as many say. The district motto is RSD, heart of the community. Today as a community, we're faced with the governor's mandate to be vaccinated or exempt under certain circumstances to remain employed. I'm asking that we do what is right by our kids, the staff and our community. Quit discriminating against those that have made a very serious and personal choice to do what is best for them by not being vaccinated. If what I understand is happening now has any truth, those of that are not vaccinated have a valid exemption are being asked to meet accommodation requirements that are visually discriminating. 
why must they wear a KN95 mask rather than two layer face masks previously required for everyone before the 18th? According to the documentation on the K-12 website, simply masking and adhering to social distancing when possible would be enough to meet these accommodation requirements. Medical records should be private and not identifiable by the type of mask a staff member is told they must wear. A visually different mask requirement is ridiculous and you may as well put a big red X on their back. We should be supporting these educators that have been taking care of our kids. And for those that weren't comfortable signing the accommodations, please bring them back with open arms. The people suffering the most by these actions are our kids. Times are uncertain right now. Let's not add to the stress and uncertainty by creating division. We're in this together, right? It's the heart of the community. We're warriors. I appreciate each one of you for taking on the heavy lift to be a school board member, especially during these uncertain times. And I'm hopeful that you'll take the time to consider each of these requests. Thank you. Uh, Maria Franken. She's coming. Okay. Hi. Did I face this way? Can they hear me? Um, you better face this way. Okay. I, I don't know the audio well enough. Very out of my Sorry. box here. Hi, Maria Franken. I've um Hi. I've been an educator for 14 years, mostly in special education, almost nine years, or a little over nine years in this district. And my whole career has been built on inclusive behavior and um, uh, teaching kids, building kids this equity up and making them feel safe. Because I can tell you, kids don't really give a dang about the ABCs, most of them, but they do care about feeling safe. Yeah. And it's been really hard to keep them feeling safe when I don't feel safe anymore. And if you think our kids don't know it, you're wrong. This tension that's in the air, you can cut it with a knife. And we're afraid to talk to each other. We're afraid to look each other in the eye. I would never dish you, by the way, Bubba. I love you, and I think you're awesome. And I can't believe that this is happening to you or any of us. I do have something prepared that I'd like to read. But I, um, I, I want you to know that I feel like we're, we're setting a very bad example for our next generation. Because it's double standard. You, you can't tell them to be kind and be so mean to each other. I'm really done with it. So let me read what I have here. Over the past few months, there have been a multitude of reports starting that fully vaccinated personnel can still get the COVID virus, but virus, what they refer to as breakout cases. Um, there is no sterilized immunity. So regardless of vaccination status, a person can still get and transmit the COVID virus. We've already seen this even on our campus. Um, only the Valchester employees, which were granted a religious or medical exemption, are required to weekly testing whether they have COVID symptoms or not. I stayed home for 28 days. I have natural immunity. I don't get the COVID. I've worked really closely for since the beginning of this. I'm not going to get it. But I stayed home for 28 days, a healthy person. Um, well, the vaccinated... Uh, Rochester School District employees are not subject to the same weekly requirements. I don't feel very safe because I feel like they could spread it just as well and no one's testing. We're not even doing uh, the daily checks like we were doing that made kind of sense. Um, no one's testing except for those that are not vaccinated, of course. Um, after 18 months into the pandemic, there is no logical reason to implement stricter protocols to wear the masks, the shields, which I think are dangerous to anybody who works in SPED, uh, the gowns, um, and the weekly testing. It's, it's very discriminatory. Rochester employees assigned to the special education departments have worked in person with the students throughout the whole 2020-21 school year as, um, and, and during the height of the pandemic. With the height, um, uh, it makes no logical sense to implement wearing, oh, wait a second, I just read that. Their requirements were not necessarily during the entire pandemic, so, so should not be necessary now. The only logical conclusion to this new mask and testing requirement would be that the school district is receiving money for making um, and testing, or that it is being done out of retribution, like we're being punished, to the employees who decided not to take the vaccine. 
the school district claims that they are implementing these things to feel safe. And I went over that, nobody feels safe anymore. We've created a hostile work environment. It's not because, I don't feel like it's because any of you care about our safety, because if you did, this would have been required for everyone well over a year ago. And let me say one more thing. If this is all about money, and I think it is, it, you know, if you were to follow the money, um, we're losing so much more in value than any dollar sign. Yep. And what we're teaching our kids is this double standard, and they're seeing right through it. And we it, we're seeing behaviors across the board, just everywhere. And I think it's because they're scared. We're giving them this environment of fear instead of the joy that we had just two years ago. Yep. Yep. So that's all I've got to say. And I want to thank you. That was very difficult for me. Thank you. Robert Gintner. He's yeah. coming. Ah. Hello, my name is Robert Gintner. I'm a Rochester resident and parent. I've removed my kids from your schools already last year. You failed them miserably. I have a question for the board. Most of us are aware yesterday the FDA gave the green light for vaccines for kids ages 5 to 12. Tomorrow, the governor is expected to make an announcement and he'll likely mandate them for school aged children. Considering, according to the CDC website, that more children died from the flu in 2018 than in 18 months of COVID, will any of you have the courage to stand up to the governor's mandate if he does so tomorrow? No, Thank you for no. your time. Nope. No. Ann Corinto. Hi, my name's Ann Corinto. I'm I'm kind of prefacing off of what he went uh, went over. Okay, you can't pretend anything that anything is making sense anymore. There is a big demonic global agenda being pushed, and it's all by design. Many believe the vaccine is a depopulation agenda, and to bring in the mark of the beast. Look up the Great Reset Agenda 2030, Event 201, and transhumanism. In Israel, with the highest vaccination rates, people cannot shop unless they receive their fourth, fourth booster. Most of Europe are in the streets marching and protesting against the vaccine passports because they know it's the end of freedom if they comply. Australia is in constant lockdown and complete tyranny because people don't want to comply with the vaccine mandates. We see the rollout here with the firings if you don't get Jeff and the requirements to show proof of vaccination in order to go to games and restaurants in Seattle. California is trying to implement a Kobe pass to usher in a system of control. This will not end until we the people push back and say no more. Parents, there is no more time to sit on the sidelines while the country crashes and burns. None of this None of this is going to blow over. If you are not aware of anything I just said, you are behind the power curve and must catch up. I can email you a tons of information. If they don't tell you any of this on the news because they don't want you to know. The current push for the FDA to approve the EOA, which is emergency use authorization, to vaccinate five to 12 year old children should frighten concern every parent. Very soon, schools will be mandating them in order for your student to attend school. Remember previous statements from the CDC, NIHU, et cetera, that children are not at risk for COVID-19. So why now is there an urgent push to vaccinate the children? All the vaccines are still under emergency use authorization, so they are not mandatory. The only one that got approved is Comirnaty. The safety and effectiveness of any of these vaccines in individuals younger than 16 years of age have not been established. Look up Dr. Malone, who is, in the, who is the inventor of the mRNA technology, which is in the Pfizer-Moderna vaccines. He is speaking out against this vaccine to children. 
This is the first time mRNA technology has been used in any vaccine. There are no animal studies done for these vaccines and the long-term side effects are still unknown. It typically takes seven to 10 years to approve a vaccine, not a few months. Um, the vaccine companies, NIH, CDC, government schools are all protected from liability under the current pandemic EUA. Even LNI, after 40 years of updating the position that employers will not be liable for any vaccine related injuries. Through, uh, I'm sorry, uh, not liable for any vaccine related injuries, even though that employer has mandated you to get it. You have no more protections, but you can say no. I have tons of information. If anybody's interested, my email is a C O R. E N T T O at protonmail.com. There's, I would recommend you go to clinicaltrials.gov, fda.gov, look up the fact sheets for the vaccine. It's very specific. It says all, um, a lot of information where you have a choice, you can turn it down. And that's still in effect. So the people that were forced to get the vaccines didn't have to get forced. You, you're lying to the people. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Amy Danielson. Hello, sorry, I wasn't really prepared. Um, I just want to say that I really appreciate all the parents that um, stood up today because I agree with everything they're saying. I'm definitely not an anti-vaxxer, but I have an issue with something with the government forcing something on especially my children and myself um and i also i wasn't aware that there was such an issue of discrimination against some of the educators at the school and how they're being treated um it, it's just really disturbing and i really hope i, I really have been a big advocate of living in Rochester because we're not like Seattle, where we're not like um, a big city. And we've always been able to uh, be a little bit more community or oriented than um, how I grew up. I grew up in Southern California and living in a big city is different than living in a small town. And that's why I live in a small town because I didn't want that. And I just feel like the standards for Seattle should be different than the standards for our small town. And I have a genuine concern about the direction about the way everything is going. My daughter started sports. Well, one daughter was do, have, has been doing sports, but now there's like a new rule saying that you have to um, test twice a week if you're not vaccinated, which um, I'm not a fan of my daughter's willing to do it because she wants to play sports, but, um, I don't understand when the science proves that as a vaccinated person, you can get COVID and you can spread COVID, but my daughter has to test twice a week and, um, no one else does. Um, it should be all or no, or no one, um, I understand why you would want to test, um, then everybody should get tested. It just doesn't make any sense that only my daughter is getting, or only the unvaccinated are getting tested. Um, I'm just looking at my notes. Well, I do appreciate what Rochester School District is trying to do. And I really hope that they would um, listen to the parents and our concerns and we stop the uh, BS because it is BS. Um, we're getting to the point that my kids won't stay in school if they require vaccination. Well, we've been looking in another state already um, because we're just kind of getting tired of it. I've always been proud to live in Rochester because we didn't put up with the uh, bullshit and I just feel like you know, we're starting to. So hopefully um, the school district listens and they um, are able to accommodate our needs. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. Kay Marquez. 
Hi, I wasn't really planning on doing this tonight. I was just gonna be here for support for all of us, but um, I um, have been in the district for 20 plus years. Um, I work with a lot of our heaviest, um, hardest kids that are struggle the most. I'm gonna try really hard not to cry because <laughs> I'm passionate and love my job. Um, we, I felt like we're all put in a hard spot. Um, these things that are being asked us has to do ask ask of us to do because we chose not to get the, sh the shot, which I don't get the flu shot because it makes me very sick. And we all have our reasons for not wanting to do it, and it should be respected, and it's not. And what was being asked of us is not accommodations; their requests and their demands. Um, I put on my form that. I tried when we first started school last year, um, we were asked to wear the KN95. I did for two weeks because that is what we do for our kids. When we do a trial plan, we do it for two weeks. If it doesn't work, we make we make a changes so that we can have success and so we can be have success with our with our students or with staff. And there is no there's no no give or there's no re, you know, it's you do this or you lose your job. Um, the people that are being asked to do these things are some of the staff that work with our hardest kids and love their jobs. And some of us aren't doing it for the money. We're doing it because we want to help our kids and we support our district. And we've had our kids in the district and we've had all of our kids graduate. And we love our jobs because we want to help kids be successful that struggle. And we've had a lot of success with that. As in for my school, for, I work at the primary school, I have always felt like it's my family. The district is my family. I mean, I just, I just, me having to choose between not getting a shot and losing my job or making accommodations for something that doesn't work for me and not trying to find a different avenue of making it better and if we are going to do these things we all need to do it because we all can spread it and we can all can get it nothing that's happening and all the decisions that's going on is none of it's fair and um i just think it needs to be a better way and i think we should all stick together and be a family instead of segregating and discriminating about people who really care about the kids and that's all i have to say thanks for listening Thank you. All right, Grant, then is everybody on the list tonight? All right. Thank you all for your time and your comments. Um, really appreciate your input, input and, and feel your passion. I, I, thank you. Uh, we are going to move to executive session for about 30 minutes. Is that right? Um, and then we'll be back to close out the meeting. Um, so could, should, could we move to executive session first and then take a 10 minute break? We can. So we would ex we come back in 40 minutes and there is no action anticipated. So that's Thank important you. to announce. Thank you. So Justin, you want to set a timer for the ten minutes, and then um, you can put the board into an exec into a breakout room for executive session. I will. Yes. I'll, I'll put audience. I'll put audience into. Okay, the one way or the other. Yep. And then we'll uh, we'll come back. So um, eight eight forty six. We'll we'll start executive session. Okay. Thanks. All right, Grant, everybody's back in. All right, well, welcome back. Uh, thanks for your patience. Uh, board members, thanks for uh, spending the extra time tonight. Kim, Justin, thank you. Uh, we are officially adjourned.